Hi, and welcome to the Ecamm channel. My name is Matthew Cheneau, and today it's my privilege to get to talk to you about my recent work on the influence of finite diffusion on cation insertion coupled electron transfer kinetics in thin film electrodes. This work was published earlier this year in the Journal of the Electrochemical Society. This work is principally concerned with the practice of B value analysis, which has actually been covered previously on this channel. If you're interested, I recommend checking out tutorial 17 as a complement to this video. In my own words, p value analysis is a technique which may be applied to voltammetric data. In it, you look at the relationship between peak current and scan rate, represented here. Typically, this value will vary between the extremes of 1 half and 1, with each of those values corresponding to specific diffusion conditions. Firstly, we have a B value of 1 half, which is representative of semi-infinite linear diffusion. You might recognize the scan rate to the 1 half power from the Randall-Savage equation. Alternatively, a B value of 1 is representative of a capacitive adsorption process, and you might recognize this scan rate to the 1 power. In our paper, we spend some time delineating various conditions which may cause a B value of 1 or a B value of 1 half to arise in either an ion blocking or an ion insertion electrode. However, the main concern of the paper is not with what happens at each of these extremes, but rather what may cause these intermediate B values between 1 half and 1 to arise. While B values of 1 half and 1 correspond to specific diffusion conditions, the meaning of these intermediate B values is still open to some interpretation, which we wanted to explore further. To that end, we developed niobium oxide ion insertion electrodes for lithium ion electrochemistry. For this application, we used orthorhombic niobium oxide thin films. Niobium oxide was chosen because it can intercalate lithium ions via a solid solution mechanism for the first lithium per niobium regime. To deposit these thin films, we follow a procedure originally published by Guarov Zha et al. in 2018, whereby we electrodeposit colloidal NBOX particles onto a conductive glass substrate and then heat at 600 C to transform it from amorphous to the orthorhombic phase. This heat treatment and drying results in a cracked morphology, which can be seen here in the optical microscope and SEM images. Once we deposited our thin films, we looked at the cyclic voltammetry response as a function of two main variables, film thickness and scan rate. This figure is a qualitative representation of the cyclic voltammetry response evolving with respect to both of those variables. As you can see, increasing either variable causes a migration specifically of the cathodic peak, which quickly exits the potential window. Unfortunately, we are not able to expand the potential window further due to the limitations of the conductive FTO substrate. However, we can also see a relative symmetry in the effects of increasing either film thickness or scan rate. We then attempted to quantify the effects of these variables by looking at the B values. Here is a representation of how the B value evolves with respect to film thickness. We look here at the B value over the total scan rate range, as well as break out into the slow and fast scan rates. As you can see, we can actually tune the B value to completely traverse this region between the two theoretical extremes of B equals one and B equals one half, solely as a function of the variable film thickness. Additionally, we were surprised by the appearance of B values below the theoretical limit of one half. In order to examine these trends further, we began to construct a digital simulation. In this work, we construct a numerical simulation of cyclic voltammetry in a thin film based on diffusion in one dimension. In this model, we represent our thin film as a series of finite elements with even X spacing in one dimension. At the electrode electrolyte interface, we vary the concentration of lithium ions as a function of the time step. The rate of change of potential with respect to time is given by the sweep rate. Once we have our surface concentration, we then model diffusion into or out of the film based on the Crank-Nicholson approach. After the diffusion modeling, we then take the concentration gradient at the surface and use it to back calculate the current value for the given time step. This process is then repeated thousands of times to model a single voltammogram. 
there are a series of assumptions which are made which are important to understand to put the results in context. The first assumption we make is constant diffusivity in the solid phase. Additionally, we assume no ohmic resistance, we ignore phase transformations, and we assume no liquid phase transport. The result is a quite simple model which can still provide some interesting results. Here we have example voltammograms which were determined using similar parameters with the exception of scan rate. On the left we have a slow scan rate of 1 millivolt per second and on the right we have a relatively fast scan rate of 100 millivolts per second. Also shown here is one of the advantages of using a digital simulation approach such as this one which is that at any point during the voltammogram we can actually extract the concentration profile and compare it. As you can see, the utilization of a slower scan rate results in a much more uniform concentration profile at each of these points in the voltammogram with respect to the concentration profiles of the fast scan rate. One way you can think about this is that the faster scan rate is perturbing the film at a faster rate, which is allowing less time for the diffusion to even out the concentration across the film. I would like to highlight here the use of the x-axis, which is not a real film thickness, but rather a dimensionless film thickness, which is equal to the real film thickness normalized by a diffusion layer length. Here, we define our diffusion layer length as a functional ratio between the diffusivity and the scan rate, normalized by RT over NF. Essentially, we are looking at the ratio between the film thickness and the lengths over which particles are able to diffuse on the time scale of the experiment as determined by the diffusivity and the scan rate. The result is that even though this is a 300 nanometer film in both cases, the dimensionless film thickness is much smaller for the one millivolt per second case than it is for the 100 millivolt per second case. Finally, we look at how the B value varies as a function of this dimensionless film thickness, both in the experimental and simulated cases. In both the experimental and the simulated voltammograms, we see a generally self-consistent trend in the relationship between B value and dimensionless film thickness, which does traverse the space between B equals one and B equals one half. The takeaway here is that it does not matter which you change between scan rate and diffusivity, but rather the ratio of the two, which determines the dimensionless film thickness, and in turn determines the B-value response. However, we do see here that the B-values of less than one half, which are still observed in the experimental case, are not represented in this simulation. However, returning to the idea of a constrained potential window, we repeated the simulation with limited turnover potentials, slowly reducing the window. And what we observed was that as the potential window became tighter and tighter, we did start to observe a B-value depression resulting in these B-values of less than one half. Essentially, what we were observing was diffusion under confinement, breaking down the semi-infinite linear diffusion assumption of the B equals one half condition. This combined with the limited potential window was what caused these B values of less than one half to occur. This figure highlights our observations experimentally and in simulation of the effects of this dimensionless film thickness on the CV behavior of these films. Shown here are the ways that this simulation both is and is not representative of the experimental data we were trying to simulate. It is my goal that our diffusion model can continue to evolve and develop a better picture of the diffusion-based limitations of cyclic voltammetry. If you're at all interested in this CV modeling, I strongly encourage you to check out my GitHub page and download a copy of this MATLAB code that I used in the paper. When using the code, be sure to be considerate of the assumptions and limitations of the base model. Thank you for the opportunity to share my work with you today. The videos in this eChem channel are free and only for educational purposes and knowledge distribution. We would like to keep on updating as long as time allows. Please like and subscribe, and that will certainly motivate us to go further. And if there's any conflict of interest, please let us know. Thanks again for watching, and see you next time.